So we want to take a look at how God has designed time. Time is relevant. Uh, and God sits outside of time and he can see uh, the future because he put the times in as he created the earth. He wound it up like a clock. And um, things are going to work out the way God wants them to work out. He is omnipresent, omnipotent, and an omnipotent God. Uh, so what I wanted to point out today is that God has given the world 7,000 years uh, as far as what he's going to do for mankind, and that is to give grace and mercy to them. He won't give it to Satan, but he'll give it to them. And this verse I got right here, Genesis chapter 6, it talks about 120 jubilees. Now, what I'm not going to do today is go into Leviticus 25, because I'm going to do that in a future um, video. Excuse me. Um, so, let's read uh, right here. So, God decided to destroy the earth. Because man have become corrupt. It says, And the Lord said, My spirit should not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Now, you can look at that on the surface and say, Well, he's just talking about the destruction of the earth. Well, that is true. Um, for the most part, it took a hundred and close to 120 years for him to destroy the earth at that time. But he's talking about something else. Leviticus chapter um, 20, I'm sorry, Leviticus chapter 25. And I'm going to read it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in Leviticus chapter 25, it talks about the Jubilee years. The Jubilee year being 50 years. Now, if you multiply 50 times 120, you get 6,000 years. So the 6,000 years will be given to man to live their lives and to make a decision. They're either going to make a decision for God or they're going to make a decision for the devil. They're either going to choose heaven or hell. And God is going to do everything in his power to make sure that happens, that they will choose heaven or hell. Now, I want to read. Second Peter 3 and 8. And it says, but, excuse me. It says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So, God has said in his word that a thousand years to the Lord is a day. So when you hear the word a day of the Lord, this is what you, um, this is what he's talking about. Six years sow your fields and for six years prune your vineyard and gather the crops. But on the seventh year, the land is to have a year of Sabbath rest. Now this is what they call weeks, seven a week of time. We call it in America a decade, which is ten, but they call it a week. But we also get our week, days of the week from from the Jewish culture or the Jewish religion. Um, so we 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 go we go Sunday through Saturday. So Saturday is actually the last day. Uh, and I'm not here to talk about Sabbath and which day is the Sabbath. Any every day should be kept holy for God. Um. 
So it says, do not sow your fields or prune your vineyards on the seventh day. So that's, that's what that means. So the, the 1,000 years of Jesus Christ reigning on the earth is the millennium kingdom. So you have 6,000 years, and on the 7,000th year, God will complete his, his uh, plan for mankind. Now, it talks about Hosea chapter 6, I think it is, or chapter 4, sorry for my ignorance, but it talks about after, talking to the Israelis, or, or to the Jewish people, after two days I will revive you, revive you, on the third day I will raise you up. And when I talk about days, I'm actually talking about a thousand year periods. So when, when, in this video, that's what I'm talking about. When I, say, when I say days, I'm talking about a thousand year period. Okay, so it talks about down here it says count off seven seventh years seven times seven so that the seven seventh years amount to a period of 49 years then have the trumpet sound everywhere on the 10th day of the seventh month on the day of atonement atonement sound the trumpet throughout your land it's to consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants it should be a jubilee for you each of you is to return to your family property and to your own clan the 50th year should be a jubilee for you do not sow or do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the untended vine for it is a jubilee and it is to be holy for you eat only what is taken directly from the field and this year the jubilee everyone is to return to their own excuse me property it says if you sell land to any of your own people or buy the land from them do not take advantage of each other you are to buy I'm sorry, I'm kind of butchering this with this thing. I'm just going to leave it all blue. You are to buy from your own people or the basis of the number of years since the Jubilee, and they are to sell. When the years are many, you are to increase the price, and when the years are few, you are to decrease the price, because what is really being sold to you is the number of crops. So what, what happens uh, in the Jubilee year is that the original owner gets what he had before and the slaves are set free and it's kind of like what jesus said when he was reading in the synagogue that he have come to you know um to set the captives free and and they got ticked off at him and chased him out of the synagogue and he said he's come for the poor and spit you know so that was his mission to be that jubilee, that's what Jesus is. Is is he is our Passover lamb? He's also the, the jubilee. He also represents um, coming to free his people from their sins. So um, let's look deeper into this. Uh, what Jesus came to do, and we can find that in Daniel chapter nine. So he's talking to, uh, Daniel's talking to the people, of course, he wrote, wrote the Bible for us, um, but he's talking to Israel also. It says 77s. Remember the sevens? I just got the reading from um, Leviticus 25. These, and I guess I should explain it. Um, what it is, is like we got, we got decades, we got centuries. Um, the Gentile world has centuries, so we have a hundred years. So every time a new century takes place, and we just had one happen in the year 2000, um, people go out and celebrate and have a wild and crazy time, like 1999, you know, 1999. Dun, dun. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, what happens is the, the hundred years is divided into ten years and of course 10 is divided into one year i mean one, uh, once okay so israel or the jewish people or god's calendar 
just even God said that these are his feasts. He's talking about the feast of the Lord, the holidays of God. Um, on God's clock, it's weeks, seven weeks or seven years is the, is times seven, which is 49 years plus the Jubilee, which is 50 years. And I'm going to pinpoint some of that stuff in probably another video, but it says, and, and this is what Jesus has came to do right here. He says, 70 weeks are determined and decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgressions, to put an end to sin, to anoint the wicked, to atone for wickedness, excuse me, to bring in the everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecies, and to anoint the most high holy place. Okay, so I don't know if that just brought this thing forward or not. Um, I just double clicked it. Hopefully it did. Okay, so I'm not going to go into the time of the, of the periods that underneath that from verse 25 to 27. But the Antichrist will come and confirm a covenant once this happens. So at the 6,000 year after six thousand years on the tip of the six thousand years i'm going to let you know that i believe that the, it will be a jubilee at the end of the six thousand years but at the beginning of time god set up a jubilee um for when adam and eve was first here it was a jubilee okay so once again, we already talked about God having uh, a thousand years equal a day, and a day equals a thousand years. Now, Jude talked about this in his um, book, uh, his private writings. Uh, people say, "Well, Jude was a you know fake. He was um, not a true prophet of God or whatever," but um i'm sorry did i say jew i'm sorry uh i meant to say um okay i'm gonna take that out <laughs> so but anyway um jew wrote about enoch and enoch wrote a book that talked about the seven day theory it says in enoch it says, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with 10,000 and 10,000 of his saints, or holy ones, to judge everyone and to convict all of them of all ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness and of all the defined words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are the are grumblers, fault finders, they follow their own evil desires, they boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. The reason why I read the whole thing is because I want you to know that Jude did say Enoch, um, and he did talk about Enoch, and, and the Bible talks about in, in Hebrews chapter 11 that Enoch walked with God and then God took him for he was not. So when Enoch talked about there should be 7,000 years of history, 6,000 years God should deal with mankind and on the 7,000th year he should have his, he, God will come and reign and rule. So for the people out there who think the world's going to just keep going, think again. It's not going to just keep going. Okay, so it says it talks about a jubilee cycle. So the world's time was divided into fifty. So the seven thousand years was divided into fifty. That's why I asked you. That's why I told you when the video first started that Noah Noah was told by God that man his spirit would not always strive with man. It would be a hundred and twenty. Hundred and twenty what? Hundred and twenty jubilees. So hundred and twenty times fifty is 6,000 years. So Israel stopped using 
the Jubilee, even though the procession of the Jubilees continued on. And what happened was when Israel leaves God, when he dispersed them all around the world, excuse me, I'm going to drop my Bible. When he dispersed them all around the world, they didn't really use the Jubilee. But there were certain rabbis that talked about the six-day theory, that there would be 6,000 years, and on the seventh day, man will be resting if they choose the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. Now, you probably say, well, why is he saying all of this? Well, I'm saying all of this to say that the clock continued to go. Now, as we go back to Daniel, uh, I'm not going to read all into this, but um, Daniel prophesied exactly when Jesus Christ will come. So when the decree to rebuild and restore Jerusalem, and that happened, 480 years before Christ came. And that is why the wise men kind of, they understood what Jesus was, was when he was coming. Now there was a star where Herod um, told them, she says, go, when you go find the the kid, you know, bring me information because he, he wanted to kill the kid. And, um, his, uh, the kid's mother, of course, Joseph and Mary, was told by God to go to Egypt, and when when Herod dies, you come back. Well, when the wise man finally found Jesus, and finally found his parents, he was two years old. He was wrapped in swaddling clothing. He was keeping warm. And the star of Bethlehem, which just appeared again in June 30th, um, uh, 2015, I saw the star right outside the window, outside my house here. That thing was pretty bright. And I find it a blessing to see the star. I think I saw four blood moons, three blood moons. I, I didn't see like two of them. And I'm going to talk about the blood moons in another video also because the blood moons are warnings, regardless of what people say. It's almost amazing how the blood moons are in 1948, it's 1949 and 1950, and then the blood moons are in 1967 and 68. There might be another year, it might be 66 and 67, I, I don't know for sure. But, um, and then, and those are very historic years for Israel. Israel became a nation. In 1948, and they were had they received the decree in 1947 to to have a nation in 1948, and in 1967, Israel took back Jerusalem um, from the from the Ottoman Empire, from actually the Brits, but the Brits kind of held on to it until they were ready. Now, um, let me see. <coughs> Excuse me. So. There was something I was trying to look at. Oh, here. Okay, so the years 1917 is when General Allenby went into... Now, these are... I guess I should say these are Jubilee years. So, what happened was we lost count of the Jubilee cycle. So, where is Jubilee? Well, I mean, if God told Noah that there'd be 6,000, so you have to go from Adam and Eve to Jesus Christ for 4,000 years, and from Jesus Christ to the second coming will be 2,000 years. So that's a total of 6,000 years. So where would the Jubilee be? Where would they take off from? What will be the cycle? Is there a sign that tells, um, tells us where the Jubilee is? And then we can start counting forward. So, so how do you tell uh, as God divides the world up into six, seven thousand years, or actually six thousand years, and it's uh, the six thousand years is divided into fifties? How do you know where we are on God's time clock? And um, it says in Acts chapter one, when the disciples were looking at looking at Jesus as he went into the air, it talks about this 
uh, saying Jesus is going to come back, but don't worry about the signs, the times and the seasons that God has appointed for himself. But you receive power from the Holy Spirit. And that's what counts. That was counted for the last 2,000 years. It's the age of grace. That the church would be an instrument for the Gentiles to be saved. And a little bit later on, with the residue off the feet, uh, uh, residue off the church, the Jewish people will actually get saved also. And the Bible says that they all, all of Israel will be saved. Now, how do you know where God left off on the clock? And I and I showed you some key years um, before. So I don't have any graphics here. I wish I can have some graphics. I don't think he has any graphics here. But um, in 12, 15, 12, 17, he said that uh, Jerusalem will be conquered by the Ottoman Turks. Um, in the future, and then there would be 10, and so that happened in 1517 all the way up to 1917. For 400 years, the Ottoman Turks were in control, controlled by the British. Uh, the land was controlled by the Ottoman Turks. Um, con and then the British conquered um, the Ottoman Turks. And then the League of Nations conferred the mandate for the Holy Land in Jerusalem. Thursday, 1917, under international law, Jerusalem was a no man's land. That's what this was. This, um, and this is Ben, this is Judah Ben Samuel. And he was from Germany. Uh, he was a writer or a, or a rabbi. And um, he talked about the Jew. So, in other words, we will catch the Jubilee as it comes right through our time. And the Jubilee, um, the last Jubilee was 1967 when Israel took back the land. This is what Ben Judah prophesied or predicted, that there be not uh, 10 Jubilees from the time uh, of 1517 all the way up to the time of the Messiah. Which, which he predicts to be 2017. And says, when Israel recaptured Jerusalem in the Six-Day War of 1967, exactly one jubilee 50 years after 1917. And that's when, once again, um, General Allenby from the British went in to take back the land. So you go from... And, and you back up a uh, hundred years from that, or fifty years from that, you uh, so you get eighteen ninety seven, or I'm sorry, eighteen sixty seven. Um, and you get the Zionists making a conference to make plans on getting a Jewish state. I hope I said that all right because I kind of butchered that um, and I'm gonna do a future video that's much more organized I just wanted to hurry up and do a video I prayed about it uh, before I started this but I wanted to get one out you can tell my urgency to get get the video out um, so in a nutshell what what then Judah is saying is from the time the Ottoman Turks take over Israel or takes over that part of the land in 1517 it'll be 400 years and then that will come to 1917 and then he said in 1917 to 1967 that'd be another jubilee that Israel would be a no man's land this is what he said and it's funny because over there in, in Israel at that time they did have a plot of land called no man's land um, uh, so and then he said in 1967 that next jubilee the ninth jubilee uh, between 1917 and then 1967 will be a no man's land but the next jubilee israel will take back jerusalem the capital and then from 1967 to uh, 2017 
would end, become the Messianic age. So 1917 would end. Technically, in a nutshell, what he's saying is that the tribulation period in the day of the Lord will start in 2017. Excuse me. I'm not saying that. I'm not picking a date or hour or nothing like that. But it's this is very interesting. He says that the the way he um, the way he got close to uh, got this prophecy. He said the secret is uh, he arrived at these predictions because he he got closer to God. And that's what we need to do in these last days. We need to be getting closer to God. Um, and that's why he would give us wisdom upon wisdom. And I'm going to do another video on this because I, I, I feel like I kind of got this video out really quickly. But um, this is the last days of the last days of the last days. We are reaching a pivotal point. And um, there's many people out there, many watchmen warning others that time is getting short. Now, what I, what I do is I say from 1948 to 19, 1948 to 2028 is my cap. It's it, my cap. And inside that cap is the seven year tribulation. It can go in any way. I think I'm leaning towards any day now. Uh, and Jesus Christ can come through the skies, crack the skies. And any day we could be going home as Christians. You have to be born again to enter heaven. And you want to put Jesus Christ first. That is a requirement. A lot of people, I had a person get mad at me at church this week because I said that the power of God will break you from your sins. See, a lot of people in the church are comfortable in their sins and they want to remain in their sins. And then they get mad at me because I tell them the truth. That's what Paul said. Are you mad at me because I tell you the truth? But this is what's going on. Is the bride sees the groom coming and the bride gets ready. Jesus Christ says, well, if I come at an hour that you think not, will you be ready? Well, I mean, are you going to be ready if, you, if, if the robber goes into the house and steals everything? Do you let him do that or do you prepare put you know in our modern day you put burger alarm systems up and you put bars on your window but you might lock yourself in the house just in case something happens so i, I i'm thankful that you guys are watching this video and i praise god for it and i and i'm blessed to, to have you guys uh watch the video so thank you and god bless y'all and y'all have a wonderful day well i just want to get that video out um, to let you know that God has a plan for mankind and it is timed to the T. Uh, that does not mean we know the day and hour, but we will cover uh, the meaning of uh, the different feast days and different feast holidays and how God's time clock works. But um, please uh, get involved, uh, go out and witness, go tell people about Jesus. Uh, go tell people to uh, become watchmen and sound their trumpet because the time is short. God bless y'all and y'all have a wonderful day.